There are probably thousands of drones in Ukraine's skies at any given moment. Just last night, before filming this episode, Russia launched over 50 so-called suicide drones at the Ukrainian capital Kyiv. It was the 15th attack, only in May, so everybody has been sleeping not as deep as they would have hoped. But that won't stop us from bringing you this, the Drone Wars 2.0. A while back in our first drones episode, we gave you a first impression of the most common types of drones and their purposes in the Ukraine war. Most of you by now will have seen footage of how drones operate on the battlefield, the purpose they serve, and also what dangers they bring. But who are the people behind this development, and what maybe new technologies and ideas can we expect to see in the future? Well, you're about to get a small insight. Welcome to Talking Tactics, where this week we went to an event hosted by the Army of Drones Initiative, where Ukrainian designers and developers come together to showcase their latest products. The Army of Drones hosts this event around every four weeks, with over 80 different developers taking part in rotation. Before the practical demonstration, the 15 companies that were there on that day got a chance to present their products, gave some basic statistics and answer questions. It's really a quite diverse and mixed group of people you will see there. There are larger aviation companies present like Jupiter and smaller local developers that basically have a more backyard MacGyver approach and budget. The aviation company Jupiter, which was founded in 2014 by Ukrainian, German and Slovakian engineers, introduced their new Hunter series. The Hunter drones differ in size, range and payload. The concept behind all these drones is the same, however. The people at Jupiter told us that they realized that to win the war, attacking logistical infrastructure is key. And that's exactly what they designed their drones for. The Hunter 1 is specialized in neutralizing trucks. The Hunter 2 railway infrastructure. The Hunter 3 stationary logistics hubs like depots and warehouses and the Hunter 4 airfields, specifically runways. It can carry a payload of around 50 kilograms, which in theory is enough to take out a tank. The drones are hybrids. They have wings and a frontal propeller, so they can fly like an airplane or like the more known Turkish Bayraktar, but they are also quadrocopters, allowing them to do vertical starts and landings, as well as hover in mid-air, which is useful both for attacking and reconnaissance. Another company that requested to stay anonymous represents the more backyard MacGyver approach. But it would be unwise to underestimate the power of simplicity, as such drones have incredible advantages, apart from being a lot cheaper to produce. They presented two of their first-person view suicide drones, the AH-7 and the AH-10. Obviously, if you use it to attack, it's a one-time thing. So their goal is to mass-produce 500 of these small drones every month. They're very compact, with two of them easily fitting into one backpack. From arriving at the position, the drone can be up in the air in around a minute. It's very resistant against rain and mud and can be launched directly from the trenches. It can carry up to 3 kilograms and even if it loses one of its propellers, it's still operational. Its small size also makes it good for reaching more narrow and difficult targets like dugouts or trenches. It also has a stealth mode and this brings us to a really central aspect of drone development nowadays. Spoofing because one big problem is so-called GPS spoofing, and electronic warfare is really one of the strong points of the Russian army. To spoof a drone is to use a radio transmitter, which emits basically a phony GPS signal. And as most navigation systems, also those of drones, they're programmed to detect and cling on to the strongest GPS signal they can find. It's basically an automatism. And the fake spoof signal, which is often stronger because it is broadcast via transmitter from a much shorter distance, overrides the original satellite signal. In simple words, it's stealing. Because not only does this trick the drone into thinking that it's in a different place than it actually is, but you can use spoofing to redirect the drone's flight path. What can you do to protect yourself from spoofing? The company Autel Flight Technology has a couple of solutions. They represent kind of the middle range between the small, cheaper suicide drones we saw earlier and larger scale aviation companies like Jupiter. They have been producing quadcopters since 2014. The model they presented at the Army of Drones event was the Evo Max 4T, originally a commercial drone which was customized for the military via their specific requirements. It can operate on four different frequencies. In addition, it can be switched into GNSS mode, which means it stops receiving GPS signals. The only signal it emits is to the control unit, so there is only a direct connection between the drone and the operator. Also, the drone uses visual points of reference via its camera and connects them to the map data stored in the device. So although it might sound contradictory, you can imagine it like an offline map with its own live street view. Its most distinguished feature is the camera, however. Thermal imagery, 50x zoom, the controller is in full HD, and it's operated by its own homegrown Autel app, which helps to protect it against any kind of electronic intrusion. You also have a stable signal of up to a distance of around 9.2 kilometers. The Evo Max 40's camera can also differentiate between humans, cars and buildings. That's not all, it can also recognize camo, meaning it sees the difference between civilians and military personnel and vehicles. 
The whole package costs around 10,000 US dollars. Anyway, that's it for this week. We hope you enjoyed this video and you got some new insights into some cutting edge Ukrainian technology. Please let us know in the comments if there's some point you're specifically interested in. Should we visit more of these events and do a follow up maybe? Thanks for watching Talking Tactics. Hit like and subscribe. And if you feel like donating to the Army of Drones initiative, you can do it via the link in the description.